Welcome back. In video 4, we will be posting to the general ledger. The third step in the accounting cycle is posting to the general ledger. The general ledger is a group of accounts maintained by a company which keeps track of changes in these balances. It is arranged in the same order in which accounts are presented in the financial statements, i.e. assets, liabilities, owner's capital, owner's drawings, revenues, and expense. And it is numbered to facilitate identification. A company's chart of accounts lists the accounts and the account numbers that identify their locations in the ledger. It lists balance sheet account followed by income statement accounts. Here is a sample chart of accounts. Notice that assets are numbered in the 100 block, liabilities in the 200 block, owner's equity in the 300 block, revenues 400, expenses 700 blocks. This numbering system is utilized to facilitate easy identification. The standard format of a general ledger account consists of a date column, an explanation column, a reference column, a debit credit, and a balance column. The transfer of journal entries to the general ledger accounts is known as posting. Posting involves the following steps. Enter the date, journal page, and debit or credit amount shown in the journal in the appropriate general ledger accounts. In the reference column of the journal, write the general ledger account numbers to which the debit or credit amount was posted. Transaction number one. The debit to cash is entered in the cash general ledger account number 101. If you look at the general ledger page for cash, you see the entry date November 1st, the cross-reference to journal page 1, and a debit posting with a balance of 25000 debit. The credit to Minelli Capital is entered in general ledger account 301. And if you look at the general ledger page for Minelli Capital, you see the date November 1st, cross-reference to journal J1, and a credit entry or posting of 25000 with a balance of 25000 This is, of course, a credit balance. And if you look back at the general journal entry at the top of the screen, you will see that we have now entered the general ledger account numbers in the posting reference column of the journal, pointing to the account to which the debit and credit was transferred to. Transaction number two, the debit to equipment is posted to the general ledger account 140. Notice the, the entry of the general ledger account number in the journal after posting. And in the equipment general ledger account, we see the date, November 2nd, the reference J1, which is journal page one, a debit posting of 10,000 and a balance of 10,000. And this is a debit balance. The credit to cash is entered in the general ledger account for cash 101. If you look at the general ledger page for cash, we see the date, November 2nd, the reference J1, again pointing back to journal page one, a credit of 10,000, and then a balance in cash of 15. Remember, a credit to cash, which is an asset account, reduces the asset. So therefore, cash balance 25 minus 10 leaves us a new balance of 15. Transaction number three. The debit to office supplies is posted to general ledger account 130. Note the entry of the general ledger account number in the post and reference column of the journal. And if we look at the general ledger page for office supplies, we see the date, November 6, reference J1, debit of 1,000, and a balance of 1,000. This balance is a debit balance. The credit to accounts payable is entered in general ledger account 200, 
if you look at the accounts payable page of the general ledger, we see the date, November 6, reference J1, and a credit posting of 1000 with an ending balance of 1000 So in this case, this is a credit balance. Transaction number four. The debit to cash of 650 is posted to the cash general ledger account number 101. So if you look at that page, you see the entry on November 10th, cross-reference J1, a debit posting of 650, and a new ending cash balance of 15,650. The credit to design fee is entered or posted to general ledger account 400. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, the general ledger page, we see the date, November 10th, reference J1, a posting of 650 under the credit column and 650 on the balance column. So since this is a revenue account, this balance is a 650 credit. Transaction number five. This is a compound entry since this journal entry contains more than one debit or credit. So the first debit is the rent expense of 850. This is posted in general ledger account 730. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, we see the general ledger page for rent expense. Notice the date, November 13, the reference to the journal, J1, and 850 posting in the debit column, giving us a balance of 850. There were no previous balances, so this is the current balance, and it is a debit balance. The salaries and wages expense debit of 750 is entered in a general ledger account 725. If you look at the general ledger page in the lower half of the screen, you see the date, November 13, the reference to the journal, J1, posting under the debit column, 750, and an ending balance of 750. Now in cash, general ledger, the 1600 credit, is posted to general ledger account number 101. So if you look at the general ledger page for cash, we see November the 13th, the date, J1, the reference to the journal, page one, and 1600 posting under the credit column. Now, a credit to cash reduces cash. Therefore, if we take the previous balance of 15,650 and subtract 1600, the new ending balance for cash is 14,050. Notice in the general ledger count, it's keeping track of all the transaction in chronological order that took place in the account and after each entry a new balance is derived. So if we want to know the ending balance at any point in time we just simply need to look at the balance column. Transaction number six. The debit to prepaid insurance is posted to general ledger account 135 and the credit to cash of 900 is posted to General Ledger Account 101. So you see the date, 1115, reference to J1, credit of 900. And as we said before, a credit to cash reduces cash. So if we take the previous balance of 14,050 and subtract 900, we will arrive at a new ending cash balance of 13,150. And naturally, this is a debit balance. Transaction number seven. Accounts receivable debit of 3550 is posted to general ledger account 110. So if you look at the accounts receivable page in the general ledger, we see an entry for the date, November 18, cross-reference J1, pointing back to page one of the journal, a posting under the debit column, of 3550 a new balance of 3550 and this is a debit balance the credit to design fees is posted in general ledger account 400 so if you look at the general ledger page for design fees we see an entry november 18 reference j1 3550 posting under the credit column bringing us to a new total 
in design fees of 4200 Design fees is a revenue account, therefore it has a normal credit balance. Transaction number eight. The debit to cash is entered in General Ledger account 101, indicating where the amount was posted. And in the General Ledger cash account, we see the date, November 28, cross-reference J1, a debit posting of 2150, and a new balance in cash of 15300 Recall that a debit to cash increases cash. Cash is an asset. So the debit is the twenty-one fifty is added to the previous balance of thirteen thousand one fifty, giving us that new balance of fifteen three. Now the credit to accounts receivable is posted to general ledger account one ten accounts receivable. So we look at that page in the ledger, we see the date, November twenty eighth, a reference J one and a posting in the credit column of 2150. Now, again, accounts receivable is an asset, so it normally has a debit balance. So when we credit an asset, we are reducing it. Therefore, our new balance is 3550, the previous balance, minus the credit of 2150, giving us a new balance in accounts receivable of 1400 and this is a 1400 debit balance. Transaction number nine. The debit to Minnelli withdrawal is posted to general ledger account 305. So we look at the general ledger page for Minnelli withdrawal at the bottom of the screen. We see the date 1130, the reference J1 to page one of the journal, 1500 posting to the debit column and a balance. 1500 and this is a 1500 debit balance. The credit to cash of 1500 is entered in the general ledger account 101. So if you look at the general ledger page for cash, you see a date of the November 30th, a reference of J1 pointing back to journal page one and the 1500 credit posting. Now credit reduces cash. Therefore, if we take the previous balance of 15.3 and minus 1500 credit, we are going to end up with 13,800 debit in cash. So cash balance went down. Transaction 10. The debit to accounts payable is posted to general ledger account 200. So if you look at the accounts payable page in the general ledger, you'll see the date. November 30th, J1, cross-reference back to journal page 1, 600 posting under the debit column, and a debit to accounts payable reduces accounts payable. So therefore, the new balance in accounts payable is 400, and it's a $400 credit balance. The credit to cash is entered in general ledger account number 101. So in the cash general ledger page, we see the date of the transaction, November 30th, the cross-reference to the journal, J1, and then posting of $600 in the credit column. Again, a credit to cash reduces cash. So if you take the previous balance of 13800 and subtract 600, we now have a new ending cash balance of 13200 and this is a debit balance. So that's it. Thank you for watching this video. The next step in the accounting cycle is preparing the trial balance. Go to video 5 to see how to prepare a trial balance.